Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we're looking at P53 and its involvement in the response to DNA damage. Okay, so uh, we have seen so far that in response to DNA damage, what is going to happen is that uh, the pr two proteins, ataxia telangiectasia mutated and ataxia telangiectasia and rad free related peptide are going to become activated and they are both serine threonine kinase enzymes which means that they add phosphate groups onto the uh, hydroxyl groups of the R groups of serine and threonine amino acids. Okay, um, so uh, they are going to phosphorylate certain proteins within the cell and the target for these two proteins is an enzyme known as checkpoint kinase 1 or checkpoint kinase 2 and I apologize in the previous video I called them checkpoint proteins they are uh, specifically called checkpoint kinase so here we have these two proteins which again as far as we're concerned their function is the same so we're just going to denote them as one but they are two separate proteins so there is checkpoint kinase 1 checkpoint kinase 1 and there is checkpoint kinase 2. And because checkpoint kinase is a bit of a mouthful, people often just denote these CH for checkpoint and then K for kinase. So CHUK1 and CHUK2 they're often denoted as. CHK1 and CHK2. So, as far as we're concerned, again, they have the same function. So we will denote this enzyme that I have drawn here CHK1 or CHK2, so that, again, that, um, that um, forward slash means or, not and. It doesn't mean that they're somehow, somehow a chimera, so it means or. Okay, so this um, CHK1 slash CHK2 enzyme is going to be phosphorylated by the active ataxia telangiectasia mutated protein or the ataxia telangiectasia and rad free related pe protein um, and when they are phosphorylated they themselves become activated so they have been uh, CHK1 sort slash CHK2 has been phosphorylated by ATM slash ATR and now it's active and this is very nice because it's also a serine threonine kinase so I don't have to explain the mechanism of what that means again because it's um, I've already done it so um, these can also add phosphate groups onto serine and threonine residues in proteins okay and now CHK1 slash CHK2 is going to go and phosphorylate the next protein in this and the next protein is P53 okay so let's have a bit of an introduction to P53 uh, before uh, we talk about what the effect of phosphorylating it is okay so P53 then uh, it's often referred to as uh, the guardian of the genome and it's one of the most important um, tumor suppressor proteins that there is uh, it's mutated in nearly all, well actually I don't know nearly all, I think it's around 50% of tumours basically. Uh, so it's an extremely important protein and it is basically there to protect the set of, well, protect the larger meta-organism from mutations that are happening in cells. So basically if a cell uh, gets a mutation, P53 is there to try and make sure, firstly, that that mutation is repaired, and secondly, to stop the cell cycle if it's in progress. So, to try and stop the cell that has a mutation from uh, replicating, basically. So, it's an extremely important protein. So, I'll go over that again. It's going to uh, activate DNA repair mechanisms, and basically, if um, until the DNA mutation has been repaired or the DNA damage has been repaired it is going to completely stop that cell from being able to divide and we're going to see uh, how it stops the cell from being able to divide in this video we're not going to go over the DNA repair mechanisms because they're many and vast and we'll do that in other videos um, but we're going to see um, how it's activated and how it arrests the cell cycle basically okay um, so um, P53 then so p53 is usually kept inactive by another protein known as mdm2 okay so uh where should i do this we're running out of space so let's have our p53 protein down here okay now p53 
is usually, as I say, kept inactive by its bound to this other protein, MDM2. So here is MDM2. And MDM2 is usually what is stopping P53 from, uh, well, from arresting the cell cycle and activating DNA repair mechanisms. And also, if the DNA repair mechanisms are unsuccessful, eventually what it drives the cell into is apoptosis. Again, we're not going to look into the mechanism by which it does that. We'll do that in other videos as well. And because, they're, again, they're long, and I don't want this video to go on forever. Okay, um, so... Um, here is P53 with MDM2 bound to it. Now, when MDM2 binds to P53, what it does is it targets P53 for ubiquitination. So what's going to happen is you're going to get this complex ubiquitinated, basically. Okay, so this is going to be ubiquitinated. And then what's going to happen, so let's say this is ubiquitin added on the side of P53 here. Then what's going to happen is the P53 is going to be destroyed, basically. Uh, it's going to go through the proteasome, and it's going to be destroyed. So that is why P53 is not active, usually, in a cell. Because you're making P53, but as soon as you make it, it ends up bound to this MDM2 protein, and the MDM2 then targets it for destruction. Well, firstly, the MDM2 stops it from functioning, and then, to add insult to injury, it's then going to, um, it's then going to actually have it destroyed, basically. So it firstly binds to it and stops it from functioning, and then it has ubiquitin groups stuck on the side of it, and that leads to the P53 being destroyed, basically. Okay, so uh, this leads to the destruction of P53. So that is what is keeping P53 from being active in the usual cell. Okay, now, why, uh, when we've had DNA damage, we want P53 activity to begin, basically. We want our guardian of the genome to uh, come to our rescue, basically. And... Um, We've seen that it activates these ATM slash ATR enzymes, which then activate the CHK1 and CHK2 enzyme. And now the CHK1, CHK2 enzyme is going to stick a phosphate group on the side of P53. And basically, when you stick that phosphate group on P53, MDM2 can no longer interact with PD, uh, P53. So here is MDM2 unable to bind to P53. So P53 is spared, basically, from the MDM2. Okay, so here it is, um, not bound to the MDM2. And basically what now happens is P53 is a very powerful transcription factor. So it... Uh, technically, it tetramizes, and then it's a transcription factor. So, technically, what happens is you get a tetramer of these P53s all going into the nucleus, and those are going to activate the transcription of certain genes. Okay, so here's our tetramer of P53s that are all active, and this tetramer of P53s is then going to um, activate the transcription of certain genes. Okay, and we'll have a look at which genes are activated in the next video.